5.1 and 5.3. Extreme it on an interval. Extrema is just another way to say the minimum and the maximum of a function. Absolute extrema must be on a closed interval. An absolute maximum is simply the highest point on the interval. The absolute minimum is simply the lowest point on the interval. They can occur anywhere on the interval, including the endpoints, as long as the endpoints are included in the interval. Relative extrema can be on an open or a closed interval. Relative extrema is similar to absolute extrema. However, it does not have to be the single highest or single lowest point on the interval. There can be multiple relative extrema per interval. A good way to think of relative extrema is as the highest or lowest of the surrounding points, or as the hills and valleys of the function. This here is not actually the first derivative test. It is simply the step to finding absolute extrema. Critical numbers are where f prime of x is zero or where f prime of x is undefined. There are four steps to finding absolute extrema. The first is to find the critical numbers on the given interval. The next step is to evaluate the function at these critical numbers. The next step is to evaluate the function at the endpoints. The final step is to compare the function values of the critical numbers and of the endpoints. The least value is the absolute minimum, and the greatest value is the absolute maximum. Let's do some practice problems. This would be a typical practice problem. You are given a function and an interval, and told to find the absolute maximum and minimum. Our first step is to find the derivative of the function. So here, that's just going to be a quotient rule. Make sure that you carry it out properly and don't make any errors in the simple part of deriving it. Our critical numbers are going to be where f prime of x equals 0 or is undefined. So for this function, that's going to be x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. The next step is to evaluate the function at the critical numbers. So we are going to evaluate f at 2 and f at negative 2. Now we're going to evaluate the function at the endpoints, so at negative 3 and at 3. The final step is to compare these four function values. So we see that f of 2 is going to be the absolute maximum because that is where it is the greatest. And we see that f of negative 2 is going to be the absolute minimum because that has the lowest value. So now our answer, the absolute minimum is negative 2 comma 1.25 and the absolute maximum is 2 comma 2.75.
Okay, so now we're going to apply this to physics. A stone is thrown straight up from an 80-foot building. The height in feet of the stone at any time t measured from the ground is given by h of t is equal to negative 16t plus 64t plus 80. What is the maximum height of the stone? So our first step is going to be to take the derivative of h of t, which is just going to be negative 32t plus 64. And then when we simplify that, it'll be negative 32t times the quantity of t minus 2. So the critical number is going to be 2. Now we're going to plug that in. So back into the equation, f of 2 is equal to 144. So now we have it. 144 is the maximum height of the stone. Okay, so the first derivative test, for real this time. Critical numbers are going to make up the test intervals. You must determine the sign of f prime of x because when f prime of x is positive, f of x is increasing. And when f prime of x is 0, f of x is constant. And when f prime of x is negative, f of x is decreasing. Okay, so this is huge. Relative extrema occur at sign changes in the derivative. Now, let's put this all to work. This is a typical example of a relative extrema practice problem. You will be given an equation and an interval, in this case negative infinity to infinity, and told to find all relative extrema. The first step is to find the derivative of the function. Here, it is just a chain rule. Again, make sure not to make any mistakes when executing the simple part of deriving it. Now, we need to find the critical numbers. So in this case, x equals 4. This is the part that is different and where we actually utilize the first derivative test. We are going to make a table using the intervals made by the critical numbers. The next step is to test values. We do not care about the actual function output of these values, only if it is negative or positive. Here it is negative and then positive, indicating that it's going to be a relative minimum. Now that we know that 4 is in fact a relative minimum, we can plug it back into the function to find out what point it is going to be. So our relative minimum is at 4 comma 0. Good job! Okay, so recap. We went over what extrema are. We also went over critical numbers and how to find absolute extrema. And then we did a problem where we found the absolute minimum and absolute maximum. After that, we applied the absolute minimum and absolute maximum to physics to show how this stuff can actually be useful. And then we learned how to do, or not learned, but redid the first derivative test and applied it to relative extrema. So overall, I would say that we are pretty successful.